Hi, my name is Nanda. I'm a technical marketing engineer working for Cisco Security Business Unit. In this video, we are going to look at AnyConnect Remote Access VPN support on Firepower Threat Defense and managing it through FMC, Firepower Management Center. Cisco has started supporting Remote Access VPN on FTD from 6 to 1 onwards. Let's see what all we have on 6 to 1. In the FTD 6 to 1, we have uh, support for AnyConnect 4.x, which can be run on Windows, Mac, Linux, and on the mobile, we have we support Android and iOS. The protocol that are supported on the AnyConnect are SSL and IPsec. IPsec with Ike V2. For authentication, in the phase one, we support LDAP, RADIUS, and client certificate. And also we can have both combination of both client certificate and AAA. It can be your AD or RADIUS. For authorization and accounting, we use a RADIUS. On the I availability, this remote access VPN can be deployed on the FTD which is running on HA or in if the, uh, in the if the firewall has dual ISP which can uh, this policy can be deployed on the dual ISP scenarios wherein user depending upon the availability of the ISP he can deploy uh, it can connect to a FTD using either of the ISP and also it can have multiple AAA for redundancy purpose when you manage the multiple FTD fiber five thread defense using FMC this policy can be shared across multiple uh, five uh, next gen firewall the use case are if you are an, an enterprise customer and has multiple firewalls on your internet edge and if you uh, multiple uh, multiple entry point for the remote access users this uh, can be used to share this policy across multiple FTDs in later if you plan to change any policy you, all you have to do is change at one locations all this policy FMC will push the required policy across all the FTDs the remote access VPN configurations are supported on both FMC that is firepower management center and FDM which is firepower device manager and we have uh, monitoring and troubleshooting with FMC firepower management center in this demo, I'm going to show this simple topology where we have a, a Firepower 23, uh, 2130 firewall with FTD running 6 to 1 and it has a simple inside and outside with 192.168.10.1 pointing towards outside and 172.16.10.1 pointing inside. I have an ICE server which is ICE 2.2 .2, um, uh, for authentication and I have a virtual FMC with 6 to 1. I have two window PC which is inside and one Windows 7 outside to simulate as a remote access user. This is a flow that we are going to see on this demo. First, I'll using FMC, I'm going to configure remote access VPN like the wizard. Before that, we can check the license required for enabling remote access VPN and then uh, we'll also check after configuring remote access vpn wizard we we'll, can check the certificate uh, for the device and create access control policy and nat exemption to allow that vpn traffic to pass through once we uh, complete the configuration we can uh, verify various vpn policies that we had configured and then deploy the policy to the device once we deploy the configuration we can use the Windows 7 PC uh, to verify the VPN connect uh, connectivity using any kind of client. And after last two section is using FMC, what all you can monitor and what are the troubleshooting tools that you have for troubleshooting VPN related uh, events. With that, let's go to the demo. I'm logging into the Firepower Management Center. This is my Firepower 2130 which is running FTD 621 on which I'm going to configure remote access VPN. 
the first uh, is to check if we have a uh, required license to configure remote access VPN so uh, first I have to make sure that this FMC is export control uh, feature enabled what that mean is to uh, with this FMC if, if this export control is enabled which means that I can use advanced in encryption such as uh, three does and above can be used which is uh, very much required for any kind of VPN client and then uh, I need to check if in the any kind of license is being enabled so here in this FMC I have um, already enabled any kind of Apex license uh, wherein I have assigned this device uh, to subscribe any kind of Apex license with that we have license then the next thing is to um, configure remote access VPN client so in order to go to the wizard which you can be available uh, which can be seen under device VPN uh, remote access VPN client remote access so here I, I don't have any configuration as of now so either I can click add new configuration or click add after clicking add we get this uh, uh, VPN wizard which is a five step process to configure the remote access VPN client the first is policy assignment wherein first I'm going to define a name for this VPN client Okay, I define a name then I can give a description for this policy and I can choose to enable either SSL or IPsec or both um, the VPN protocol for this configuration and then I can assign um, one or more 5 thread defense for this policy since I have only one device in the in this FMC I just assign and in case if you have multiple FTD you can assign um, all those FTDs which which is going to get applied this remote access VPN policy so once this is done then I move on to the next step which is a step 2 where I define connection uh, uh, connection profile here I can uh, uh, this policy reuses the name of that uh, policy uh, for the connection profile uh, if, whether I can leave it as it is or I can change it the next is to define authentication method we have a triple a only client certificate only or a triple a plus a client certificate so for this demo purpose i'm going to use a triple a only uh, once you define triple a uh, then you have to say to from which server you you're going to get authentication in this example we have eyes through which uh, through radius we are going to configure so we have two options either use railm with um, um, LDAP AD or radius server I'm going to use radius server so this is since I don't have any um, radius already configured on the FMC so it pops me up a new um, object manager radius object manager I'm going to define an eyes here please know that um, I've already uh, configured my eyes um, on um, pre-configured my eyes so I don't have to in this demo I I'm not going to show you any eyes configuration so this is what we required for a radius server I've configured and then map it for authentication and then if required I can uh, configure for authorization and accounting uh, for this demo I'm going to leave it as it is uh, for IP assign um, IP address assignment for the VPN client uh, after successful authentication Either it can be through radius, um, through radius, or it can be through DHCP or the IP pool from the FTD. So I'm going to uh, use uh, IP pool from the FTD. Uh, so either it, uh, no, uh, we can, um, since I don't have any IP pool, I'm going to create a new one. Define a pool of IP address uh, for the VPN client and then define the net, net mask. 
see okay and then assign this for the policy i assigned it i got got it here if you want you can define ipv6 pool um, pool here next is uh, define the group policy uh, either use the default group policy or um, create a new one so in this uh, demo i'm going to use the default group policy so what i'm going to do is go on to uh, click edit and then uh, use the existing default policy and then do some modification on the group policy so this is the existing default group policy so i can see that uh, at the group policy level i can define whether uh, which vpn protocol that it needs to use whether ssl or ipsec i'm going to leave this as uh, as a blank and then uh, if you want to define a uh, banner for the user once he gets successful authentication he gets to see uh, this banner message then you can define the DNS policies and then define a split tunnel so for this example I'm going to define the split tunnel um, the default setting says to uh, do a full tunnel I'm going to say to use split tunnel uh, I'm going to say that use tunnel all the specific below network so now I have to define a standard ACL to do this uh, split tunneling so I don't have any split tunnel already exist so I'm going to create a new standard ACL uh, so I'm going to tell instruct the FTD to send, uh, encrypt all the data's destination to inside network which is 172.16 chain.0 with subnet 24 so I create a standard ACL with a destination IP 172.16.10.0 so use this uh, standard ACL as a split tunnel and then once you define the split tunnel um, uh, similarly uh, the split tunnel for IP basis also can be configured here similar uh, DNS uh, request also can be tunneled uh, or it can be sent outside so that can be defined here um, next is define any connect profile so I need uh, any kind of XML profile for this group policy um, so I don't have anything on the FMC so I'm going to create a new one uh, this again uh, creates a new ob uh, object for any kind of client I'm going to define a name so I have um, I have some any kind of XML profile which is already there in the PC I'm going to use that so um, moment you upload it automatically this automatically detects that it's an XML uh, any kind of uh, client profile it uh, it sets a file type I'm going to save it and then uh, you can uh, configure other SSL parameters or connection settings that you, you want to customize and then if you go to advanced setting uh, you can have um, access list per access group, um, group policy and then if you want to restrict uh, the VPN traffic to a particular VLAN that can be defined here and then um, session uh, type like uh, at what time frame that you want uh, users to use VPN client and what are the, uh, does that a particular user has simultaneous connection can be established all this uh, can be defined in the advanced so now uh, we have uh, uh, configured or customized the group policy I'm going to save that uh, so we are back into the wizard we have completed um, connection profile that is stage 2 uh, and then we'll move on to the next step that is um, trying to push any kind of image um, uh, to the FTD which can be deployed to the, to the client so here I don't have any uh, any kind of image I'm going to click this plus icon which is going to help me um, add any kind of image I'm going to define a name I'm going to say, uh, say for any kind of window image uh, pick a windows image I have uh, 4 or 3 for windows um, and then uh, 4 or 4 let me pick both so as you see the uh, moment I uh, upload an image the file type, type has been detected automatically 
Similarly, I'm going to upload another Windows. So I have one more Windows, which is 4.4. I'm going to upload that as well. This is to show you that uh, we can have multiple images. Uh, not only Windows, I can uh, upload one more image for Windows uh, or Mac. So apart from uh, uh, image type, it also detected that uh, this any kind of image uh, operating type. So now uh, we have this list of images. Now I have to uh, select whichever in any kind of image that is required for this policy. So I'm going to leave the uh, 4.3, which is old, and then select Windows 4.4 and then uh, Mac uh, 4.3 here. And then as you could see here on the top of the diagram uh, where it illustrates that we have already uh, this green tick indicates that we have already completed the um, uh, policy on the remote users configure policy on the uh, triple a side now uh, the blue indicates that we are currently the stage 3 currently got or on the client side uh, part of the configuration so let's move to the stage 4 where um, where the policy required on the ftd is being defined now I have created the policy so to which interface I need to apply so now I am choosing the outside zone uh, this zone can have more than one interface uh, this is where you can have uh, redundancy at uh, uh, interface level if you have uh, multiple ISP uh, on your network and you have outside one and outside two you can put both outside one and outside two in a uh, uh, individual uh, outside zone and then if you dip Apply this policy to the outside zone both interface that is outside and outside one will have this remote access vpn uh, policy enabled the user can choose either outside or outside one to log in to the uh, any kind of vpn so once you have applied the policy to the interface the next is to uh, define certificate for the outside interface for device uh, device authentication um, so here in this example i'm going to use a self sign but in the production network we'll be using a, a, pub, a public ca server certificate so i have uh, um, completed the stage Four, then move on to the step five where it's summarize all the configuration that we had configured just now um, apart from this configuration summary it also gives you uh, um, information that uh, you need to configure access control policy you need to have a NAT exemption and then you need to have a DNS configuration to facilitate um, the traffic uh, to pass to the uh, FTD so with this uh, we have complete the configuration of remote access VPN uh, through wizard well, let's click finish um, then now I have configured the remote access VPN policy uh, if you want you can see uh, go, go and see the connection profile here which we have configured you can see the pool IP address triple information and then alias and the group policy if at all you want more group policy to be at uh, change the group policy you can do it here similarly on the access type that is um, outside interface and what are the uh, uh, SL DTLS uh, that you have uh, assigned then certificate information are being uh, seen here and then next is on the advance you can check um, um, any kind of images IP address assignments and then it's sequence uh, certificate mapping in case if you are using a certificate uh, client side certificate authentication and then group policy wherein you can have multiple group policy based on radius attributes that uh, that you receive from the eyes or um, other radius server uh, you can dynamically allocate group policy to the user or group Likewise, IP, uh, IPsec configuration can be con uh, customized here. 
now that we have complete uh, configured a remote access VPN client and next is uh, next step is to uh, the map the uh, certificate to the device so I have created a certificate that needs to be used for the device now I have to uh, map the certificate to the device um, this is a fiber 2130 that uh, device that we are on which we are configuring policy and this is a self-signed certificate that we have created right now so I'm going to assign that certificate uh, to this device so uh, there are next two items are to configure the access control policy um, to allow the traffic to pass through the uh, firewall so for which I can use either use access control or pre-filter uh, pre policy um, the pre-filter policy you hardly have to use, I mean, uh, use is uh, matching character are based on IP uh, IP address and the port um, whereas I would personally recommend you to use uh, access control policy because it has more matching uh, information and also it can um, use IPS and AMP filter can be um, implemented to uh, check if the traffic that is coming through the tunnels are um, uh, proper traffic if it if there it has any malicious traffic it can be dropped at access control loop um, at this level so here in order to allow that VPN traffic I'm going to create a new access rule um, so you define the uh, zone from outside to inside outside will be a on source and then inside will be a destination network would be um, inside network will be on the destination that is the protected network and then for the source um, uh, it will be a VPN pool IP address that we have created um, next uh, you can define uh, user base access policy if in case if you have uh, configured real m where you will get all the username and groups uh, and with which you can define rules and then you can define policy based on application pol uh, policy based on um, uh, inspect the traffic with ICE, IPS or file inspection so here in this example I'm going to um, conf uh, configure IPS with balance security uh, and connectivity and define a name for this group so with this um, we have completed the con uh, required configuration for access control policy next is to create a NAT exemption uh, for VPN traffic which can the NAT uh, policy can be seen under device so this uh, FMC already has a NAT policy which is applied to the uh, 2130 um, there's a default uh, dynamic NAT so now I have to create a one more NAT exemption on top of this policy uh, so that any traffic that is coming from the VP, uh, remote access VPN or to the VPN uh, will hit the ad, uh, twice, NAT, twice identity NAT which will eventually act as a uh, act as a NAT exemption so I'm going to set manual static NAT um, set NAT uh, before uh, here from inside to outside on the translation um, anything on the inside network uh, translate to inside on the destination I uh, dist uh, destination say I address and then say um, VPN pool IP address that is uh, VPN network one seventy two uh, sorry ten ten dot ten dot zero slash twenty four and then on the destination I'm going to map the same IP address uh, translate so it means that it is doing an identity NAT identity twice NAT and then on the advanced make sure that uh, you specify do not uh, do proxy or in case if the translation network is uh, directly attached to the fiber uh, thread defense
now that we have configured uh, NAT, let's um, uh, go to the object object manager and then check the, all the objects that are created during uh, during when we configured um, remote access uh, with, uh, remote access VPN through wizard so when we created uh, when we through the uh, wizard uh, you would have seen that we have created an object for radius which can be seen here and then IPv4 pool that we created here it's it come it is appearing here and likewise uh, uh, file that uh, files that we have created for any connect kind of profile any kind of images for Windows um, and Mac those are here and then group policy that you had uh, we had edited during the wizard are you know it is here in that object manager the idea of having all these things under object is that these objects can be reused um, on a different I um, different VPN policy or a VPN policy on a different um, FTD so um, again you can see the standard ACL that we have created for split tunnel and then uh, uh, self sign certificate that we created and uh, uh, and the network um, network objects that you created for inside and VPN all those things are under um, object and object manager <coughs> so uh, we are done uh, we have completed the configuration uh, all we have to do is like deploy this policy to the device so the deployment is successful and uh, now all we have to do is go and check um, try to establish a remote access VPN client from the uh, Windows 10 which is on the outside network um, this is a Windows which does not have any VPN client so first I open a uh, Internet Explorer browser and then type in uh, IP address of um, the FTD outside interface or the domain name uh, so I get the certificate uh, warning if I use a proper CA then I would not see the certificate warning so now one, once you logged in it gives a username password um, uh, authentication once a successful authentication um, uh, this is a message that we had uh, remember that we have configured on the banner so that uh, after successful authentication gives a banner message once this uh, then it checks uh, the PC if it already has any connect then it would not do anything if there is no any connect image it is going to automatically uh, deploy and install any connect image on the PC which is what you are seeing now which is called web launch and this is a user experience uh, for the first time when he does not have an any connect image after he gets any connect image then um, all he has to do is open up the client and then uh, click a connect which i'm going to show you in a short while now now um, after the successful authentication it automatically uh, connected to the network so which can be seen with this icon um, you can see that it is it says that it is connected to the 192.168.10.1 and then uh, the client ip that it has got is 10.10.1 and the server IP is that is FTD external IP is 192.168.10.1 and um, it has split tunnel um, all the unencrypted traffic are uh, towards unknown network and then the net with 162.16.10.0 which is my inside network will be secured which will go through the tunnel now uh, let's do a connectivity test have one window uh, PC inside I'm going to see if it I'm able to reach I'm able to reach the inside network so um, our network is up and running um, let's uh, do some uh, monitoring activity uh, with this so I can uh, log into FTD through CLI
so once you log in then you can use uh, some of the CLA um, CLA option like any okay before going to any connect detail like any connect it's going to give you the uh, any connect uh, uh, short brief information that um, the user one with uh, assigned IP address 10.10.1 with public IP address uh, 181.10.10 and what is the in, um, uh, what is the duration that he has connected what is the inactive stage whether he has any VLAN mapping all this information can be seen here I can also do uh, summary information uh, if you have more VPN then it's going to give you a summary information about all the any kind of uh, client as well as the side to side VPN information um, I can also use uh, uh, detail any kind of which will give even more uh, detailed uh, information of of the entire tunnel that it has established. So apart from this CLI, um, we have a monitoring on the FMC that is Fiber Management Center. Let's uh, see some of some of the uh, on the dashboard. Uh, you go to the overview dashboard and then see access control user uh, user statistics where we have predefined VPN um, tab where you can see information about um, active VPN uh, user uh, that it says that uh, user 1 is currently you know, logged on to the VPN and then um, uh, which all devices that has a remote active uh, VPN client so in my case I have only one FTD which is uh, 2130 and it says like number of user count as 1 and then um, this shows that uh, uh, VPN uh, no, uh, list out uh, all the users based on how long they have been connected. Since there is only one user which is logged in, uh, we don't have this data. Uh, apart from that, there is a report which says based on client information. So now, uh, since we have used any connect window image 4.4, it is one. If you have multiple uh, remote um, uh, users connecting in with various VPN client all this report can be seen like uh, you can see um, Number of users with any connect window uh, Mac image with particular version how many of them logged and then uh, here uh, Windows with 4.4 um, uh, How many of them are logged so all this report can be seen here This is this is uh, this report will be based on the user data transaction since it is a first connection We don't have it probably over a time it builds a database here uh, uh, similar to the client application we have uh, 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 we have another uh, VPN client application uh, report here moving on to the next uh, re uh, reporting uh, uh, you can go to the an um, analysis and then go to user user active sessions here you can see uh, who are all current users have, who have logged in or and their information like uh, what is that um, IP at uh, VPN pool IP address who, what is the user name and uh, uh, to which device that he has logged in so you also have this op this option of logout uh, which means that if you can you know select this and then if you click logout it's going to automatically uh, terminate the connection on the client side through the FTD we'll just see that um, it has sent this uh, instruction to the F FTD and the FTD as would have terminated the session. Let's check that. Um, as you can see that uh, um, it has terminated the session automatically. And next is to see user activity. Here in this user activity you can see uh, or generate report um, on all the user activity. Uh, so here it, sh it shows that um, report I can just um, make it for one day or one week I can see let's say for a week time so it is going to generate a generate a report for a week uh, in a week I can see that these uh, these many attempts a VPN connection has been attempted by this particular user and uh, uh, what is the IP that he has got assigned and what is that uh, any kind of group uh, policy that he has been assigned what is a VPN session type whether he has used uh, IPsec or SSL uh, what is a uh, pub uh, uh, 
public IP that he has connected with and then what is the client version that um, uh, whether it is a Mac or a Windows what is the any connect image that he has used um, all this information and what is the time uh, how long he's been connected what is that uh, uh, data that he has been transmit, uh, transmitted and then to which FTT that he has logged in all this information can be seen on user activity so we have a, a VPN troubleshooting uh, uh, section for, for in order to make this uh, uh, work uh, you only have to, you have to uh, uh, do some s uh, settings um, I think it's already turned on so um, you could see that uh, it has generated uh, um, or it has parsed all the syslogs that are relevant to VPN and then uh, uh, you know, uh, can see it on this section and you have this uh, um, search option with which you can filter the events see like uh, I can filter the events based on client IP address and various other parameters like username um, so with, in this example I'm going to use the client IP address to filter the log events so uh, all this is log which contains that IP address can be seen here uh, similarly you can filter based on username um, so apart from this uh, troubleshoot uh, troubleshooting section which is specific for VPN uh, we can use uh, device uh, troubleshooting tools like packet tracer and capture for advanced troubleshooting um, let's take some moment to uh, uh, check uh, see how it, it works so here I can use a packet tracer packet tracer which is something uh, simulates the packets uh, based on the IP address and then port number that you give here and then we can see which all modules uh, affects those packet so example here I'm going to define a source IP as 10.192.168.10 which is from outside uh, to, to um, AAC outside interface IP address source uh, uh, source interf I mean, the interface at which will receive this packet is outside uh, source port something random destination port 443 which is um, SSL I'm going to say start so what the FTT is going to do is it is going to simulate a packet with this information and then send it to the outside interface and FTT is going to behave as if it sees a real packet and then um, it's going to uh, check against the policy so you can see that in the phase one it checked against uh, 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 okay this is a phase one which is a capture and the next is a access list that it says that access list allows the traffic then route lookup Similarly, each and every module uh, uh, this packet is being sent to uh, uh, NAT, IP option, cluster redaction, and you can also see that VPN module is being invoked because we have used 443, and then it says that uh, VPN module has detected, and then it is even that is allowed, uh, um, and finally it, it says that the packet is allowed to um, go for further inspection. Likewise, we can use uh, a packet uh, packet tracer where you define uh, in the packet tracer you can define a, a condition uh, with which you can um, capture the events I say 192.168 chain.10 192.168 10.1 uh, on the outside interface say save uh, what the packet captured is it traps uh, with this filter events it's going to trap the all the packets and be, uh, whichever packet which matches uh, will be captured and which can be uh, used for further investigation uh, with this we have come to the end of this video I hope you like it uh, we'll see you in uh, in another video. Thank you.